In this scenario, we're in a single-story home. This mirror is the actual building in which FSRI conducted research experiments to understand fire growth and spread. It's a three bedroom, one bath with a kitchen, dining room, and living room in the middle. The fire starts here on the sofa in the living area. The source of the fire could be something small like a candle, cigarette, or lithium ion battery powered device like a smartphone. Picture yourself in this home. You're in the back bedroom over here with the door closed. I'm gonna show you some real world footage from the experiment so you can understand what the actual fire conditions were like. Look. You can see the flames and smoke starting on the couch right here. So let's roll forward. After just 40 seconds, you can see the flames are growing. But what I really want to call out is the smoke, which is spreading across the ceiling and is beginning to fill the house from the top down. This isn't like the smoke you felt from a campfire or your grill. It's incredibly hot and filled with toxic gases. Smoke in a home fire is made up of dangerous chemicals like carbon monoxide. The longer the fire burns, the more toxic the smoke gets because the concentration, or parts per million of these gases, increase. If inhaled at only 400 parts per million, you'll start feeling the effects, causing headache and nausea. At 6,400 parts per million, you're dizzy and almost unconscious. It can get to the point where a single breath is dangerous to your life and health. The temperature of the smoke is just as dangerous. In our research, smoke reached temperatures of over 1,000 degrees. A few seconds of exposure can cause second and third degree burns on your skin and in your lungs. Back to the timeline. We're at 80 seconds now and smoke has reached every room in the house, except your bedroom with the closed door. Even a hollow core door acts as a protective barrier between you and the smoke and flames, buying you precious time in a home fire. Your reaction time is key here. Best case scenario, a smoke alarm sounded within 30 seconds. But research shows even after an alarm, most people are slow to act. Speed is paramount. Every second the fire and smoke are growing more deadly. Your normal exit route may be through the front door, but that's through the living room where the smoke and fire have been building. At just three minutes after ignition, you can't see through the smoke. You could be experiencing temperatures over a thousand degrees and lethal levels of toxic gases. So what do you do? What's your plan B to get out? What if you can't get out? Are there other people or pets in the house? How are they getting out? If you think these are impossible questions to answer for the first time in the middle of a fire, you're right, they are. It's why you have to create your escape plan before a fire ever starts. Map out escape plans A, B, and C and practice them with your whole family. If you can't see your way out for escape plan A, that's when you need to turn to plan B. If all routes are blocked, get behind a closed door, turn on the light, and dial 911. That's your plan C. Remember, fire moves fast. Plan ahead to save lives. Create and practice your escape plan. Everyone in the household needs to know their plans A, B, and C by heart. Make sure you have working smoke alarms properly installed on every level of your home, including the basement, as well as inside every sleeping room and outside every sleeping area. And don't forget, close before you doze. Get that protective barrier of a door between you and the smoke and flames.